Hello and a warm welcome to federal special program Capital Beat. Just two days after he got the bail, Arvind Kejriwal has announced that he will step down from the post of the chief minister. Now he has said that he is going to seek the certificate of honesty from the Delhi voters. Apart from this, he has also called for polls to be held in November. He says that Aam Aadmi Party will now choose a new CM until the election, but BJP has called his resignation a conspiracy to hide corruption. So the big question we are asking, then what is the real strategy behind Arvind Kejriwal stepping down? Is he trying to evoke the sympathy of the Delhi voters? And apart from this, does this move put BJP on the back foot? Joining me now is Anil Tyagi, a senior journalist, political commentator, and editor-in-chief of G-Files. Thank you so much, Mr. Tyagi, for joining. We have our senior editor from The Federal, Puneet Nicholas Yadav. Thank you so much, Puneet, for joining. And I'll begin Thank with Mr. Tyagi. That how would you view this uh, stand which has been taken by Arvind Kejriwal, that he's going to step down in a day's time? And as we speak, I'm told that Manish Sisodia will be meeting Arvind Kejriwal at his... Uh, official residence at civil lines and that's when these two leaders will decide who the next chief minister of delhi will be how do you look at this view uh, uh yes mr Taki. this is a political uh, thing uh, which you are discussing but uh, uh, to your viewers uh, i must uh, explain delhi for last 10 years what they have done to delhi uh, ruling the Delhi uh, with the thumping majority. And uh, Jock has explained the thing for your viewers, though they are in English, but usse badhiya kuch ho nahi sakta hai. Suni bhi. You will also relish this uh, poem. Kya boondo baash poochte ho garib ke saakino? Kya boondo baash poochte ho garib ke saakino? हमको गरीब जान के हंस हंस पुकार के दिल्ली जो एक शहर था आलम के इंतखाब में रहते थे मुताखिब ही जहां रोजगार के रहते थे मुताखिब ही जहां रोजगार को के उसको फलक ने लूट के बर्बाद कर दिया हम रहने वाले हैं उस उजड़े दयार के दैट इज दिल्ली नाउ यू कम टू द पॉइंट uh, what is going to be the impact of Kejriwal? And Kejriwal could predict and sense what is BJP is going to do. Uh, leaders are born, leaders are cultivated. It takes 40 years, 30 years to cultivate the leaders. The Amit Shah gang, I will call it as a gang, has sidelined the Vijay Goel, Sudhan Mittal, Tulsi Agrawal, Vijendra Gupta, all sidelined now. They are the Delhi leaders. Those who have started their career since 1976 to till now. So they have been dumped by the BJP. Now BJP for last two weeks, as per my information, has uh, prompted the great leader of the Amethi, Smriti Irani, to hold the reins of the Delhi. Now in the days to come, they will formally announce Smriti Irani as the chief of uh, would be chief minister of Delhi. Oh. Now, Kejriwal does not have any local stand. I Kejriwal has got a catch 22 situation. Is this is this a hundred percent uh, true news that Smriti Rani probably will be made the chief uh, ministerial candidate of BJP? How authentic I am is this? I, I am telling you the confirmed news you will read in the newspapers that mm. has been planned for last one year. So what I am saying is you, the Delhi is run with the Kejriwal gang, the Kejriwal group is run by four people. Delhi, Kejriwal is the face, his wife is there, his son, in, uh, uh, Sala is there, brother-in-law, Kejriwal's wife's brother. And in all Delhi, I am giving you one example, otherwise I will have to talk to the ministry wise. Delhi has got 70 Vidhan Sabhas. Our great, great uh, honorable Lieutenant Governor of Delhi has written in Indian Express, the illegal constructions are going on. Nobody is going to stop. That is an unfortunate part of Delhi 
that the lieutenant governor of Delhi is writing a column complaining. Complaining to whom? The scenario is the 70 MLAs have been assigned the job and Kedriwal reportedly and allegedly has appointed the AAP workers to see the construction in those respective constituencies. Or ek lender dalne ka kharcha locality wise starts from 1 lakh rupees to 8 lakh rupees. In every house you have to pray the bribe which is the newly constructed house in Delhi is rupees 10 lakh. Second example of the bribe I will tell you the so called great honest chief minister of this Delhi. In Delhi you ask the private school operators how they are fed up and I'm alleging there is a charge you give 2000 rupees on every seat to increase the seat in a private school plus rupees 10 lakh bribe at one 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 go. That is a two departments. If you will talk, there is a 40 department in Delhi. I will give give you each what is the bribe rate in Delhi. Delhi Kedriwal has put a wrong narrative in this election right now. He is looking for a certificate of honesty. Had he been raising the narrative that I am the victim of the BGP government of no uh, rhymes and reasons and I should be exonerated, but no. Right. So it's a well thought out strategy. Why he is seeking the certificate of honesty from the people? I'll come to Puneet now and then come back to you again. But Puneet, how would you uh, see Kejriwal stand? I mean, is it some kind of a political stunt you would see? Or this is simply gaining sympathy from the Delhi voters? How would you really view this all of a sudden announcement by Kejriwal that he's going to resign? He seeks early polls in November, along with uh, apparently Maharashtra and Jharkhand. You know, there are two different aspects, two different uh, issues here. One is him seeking early elections in November and the other is his resignation. I would personally see both things separately and I'll explain why uh, in a while. But as far as the resignation is concerned, you know, Arvind Kejriwal is somebody who understands political gimmickry very well. He uh, He's very good, almost as good as, uh, you know, senior leaders from the BJP or, you know, the old timers of the Congress when it comes to playing the field uh, and, you know, playing to the gallery in politics. So he knows that there are enough number of issues that are stacked against him. If he goes into polls, uh, you know, as per schedule or uh, earlier, irrespective of that, there will be attacks on the liquor policy issue. There will be attacks on various other failures of his government. Uh, and there will also be some element of anti-incumbency. All kinds of issues will come up. So what do you do? You make the election uh, you know, like nationally for the last 10 years, Modi had done of Modi versus who? In Delhi, you do the same with Kejriwal versus who? You bring Kejriwal front and center of your strategy. And take this high moral ground. So I, I would say that this decision, in a nutshell, if I have to describe, it will be maybe five, four, five, you know, six points that I think uh, he aims to achieve. Uh, I don't want to go into the details of, you know, how he has run his government, uh, where corruption has been happening, because uh, at this moment, that is not something that we are discussing. We're discussing the instant issue of his resignation. So those four or five points, I'll quickly, uh, you know, uh, relate to you. One, he takes a high moral ground. That's something that in politics, very often works wonders, you know, even irrespective of how uh, badly cornered you may be. Uh, you know, th th that's an unfortunate part of politics, but it's true. You take the high moral ground, you say that, you know, I have been framed and, uh, you know, all the other narratives that come along with that, political vendetta, targeting, misusing of uh, uh, agencies, etc., etc. 
But you take the high moral ground and say that, look, for those six months that I was in jail and I remained chief minister, I did it on principle because I did not want to, uh, you know, do my politics dictated by what the BJP wanted me to do. Now that I'm out of jail, I'm taking a principled stand that I will step down as the chief minister. And it is the, the you know, uh, thing of giving the verdict of whether I'm innocent or not is with the people of Delhi. They will decide whether I'm innocent or not. So you take a high moral ground. You know, if they want me to come back, I will come back. That's secondly, uh, I, I mean, as I said, it makes Kejriwal, brings Kejriwal front and center of the campaign. You, uh, whether it is any of the current leadership crop of the BJP or the Congress or as, uh, you know, Mr. Tyagi was talking about Smriti Irani or any of the others, where is the alternative? You know, and the BJP, 26 years, the BJP has not been in power in Delhi. Out of those 26 years, 15 years, they controlled the municipal bodies. Despite controlling municipal bodies, despite for the last 10 years sweeping the Lok Sabha elections, they've not been able to come to power in the state assembly. They've not got the leadership chops for it. You know, they, they've tried all kinds of people, uh, you know, from their old guard back in the day, you know, from BK Malhotra and, uh, you know, uh, Mukhi and... Uh, uh, Madan Lal Khurana and all of them, Sushma Swaraj, of course, uh, served briefly as chief minister. Then Kiran Bedi, then you know, Harsh Vardhan, all of them they've tried and none of them have been able to deliver Delhi to them. And quite frankly, uh, I don't mean uh, any offense to them, but you know, people like Vijender Gupta, Viren Sachdeva, you know, uh, Harish Khurana, it is just not in them to deliver BJP, uh, uh, deliver uh, Delhi to the BJP. It's as simple as that. So you bring Kejriwal front and center of the campaign. That's the second point. Thirdly, it also averts president's rule, which the uh, many in the Ahmad party who I'd been speaking to were a little edgy about, you know, that uh, and very recently, the BJP uh, state chief had written to the lieutenant governor asking for president's rule and that that recommendation had been sent from the LG office to uh, the president. Uh, but this aspect I'll touch upon in de greater detail later because there is a, 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 you know, a catch here, I, even in what Kejriwal has done. You know, he uh, perhaps uh, as an afterthought, he might realize the mistake he's made now. Uh, you know, after he's done his consultations, or maybe he he's thought it through. I don't know. Fourthly, it counters. It gives him time to counter the allegation, the issues of anti-incumbency against his government. Mind you, he's been in power with an absolute majority for ten years. Uh, there will be anti-incumbency in certain quarters. Although I personally believe that the Ahmad party is still much better poised than the Congress or the BJP in Delhi. Uh, and it is not a comment on their performance. It's simple politics, electoral politics, emotive issues, his, uh, you know, organizational issues, all of that. Fifthly, Puneet, Puneet, Puneet I'm just yeah. inter entertaining you uh, to make uh, this discussion very interesting. Uh, see the, the paradox of the electioneering is not in Delhi. That is happening in uh, USA also. The John Pop has said to the all Americans, choose the lesser evil. What an unfortunate thing is in the world. So when we are talking about Delhi, we are talking about the lesser evil choice. Now you I agree. I, I, I agree. Uh, yeah. And then fifthly, it gives Kejriwal a lot of time or at least some uh, an extra time to mobilize, to be with the people minus the trappings of being the, you know, the, the chief minister, be among the people, mobilize his cadre, mobilize his support base. Our Manish Sisodia, ever since he's come out of, way, uh, of prison uh, on bail, he's been doing the same. He's been doing Padyatras on a daily basis, uh, you know, and that's part of the AAP strategy to mobilize, remobilize, revitalize, reinvigorate the cadres. And finally, 
it allows kejriwal to take the battle to the bjp on his own terms instead of fighting the battle on the bjp's terms so as far as the question of resignation is concerned these are the six ways in which i specifically look at now on the other aspect as i said there are you know you have to look at uh, early elections and resignation separately now to me to my mind this whole talk of early elections is a bit confusing uh, to be honest to me because what has mr kejriwal said he has said that he wants elections to be held in november alongside those of maharashtra and jharkhand but does he have the power to get those elections conducted in november he does not that is the prerogative of the election commission he may recommend that i want it done this way but do you think the election commission will take his diktat that you uh, because the delhi chief minister has said we will do it in Puneet, november december punit legally he can only resign and dissolve the assembly he cannot exactly. dictate he cannot recommend anything that prerogative lies with the lg to recommend to the election commission that election should be held as per the convenience of the election commission that's all that is the legal status yes so uh, to add to that what i was saying is secondly even if he wants elections to be held in november he will first need to recommend dissolution of the assembly you cannot have early elections without the assembly being dissolved the assembly will have to be dissolved he has not said he is going for dissolution of the assembly so without dissolution of the assembly how do you go for early elections right so no, i no, think no, no, that, that, that has been planned ramnivas the speaker of the assembly has gone to his home and they are calling i think one day uh, uh, session of the assembly and where the kedriwal will brag for one hours and uh, create a narrative uh, for the leaders that is being planned they, that, that's what they are doing Okay. Well, uh, let's we'll have to wait and see whether that happens because uh, Saurabh Bhardwaj is on record, and so is Atishi yesterday. Uh, and uh, I spoke to Saurabh just you know before logging in here also, and he said that uh, as far as I know, we'll meet Mr. Kejriwal later in the day and discuss this further. But as of now, the information we have is that we are not going to ask for dissolution because if we ask for dissolution, we will. uh you know throw the ball back in the bjp court and give an advantage to the bjp because once we do that it gives the lieutenant governor enough uh, reasons to cite constitutional crisis and uh maybe recommend president's rule president's rule can go on for 6 months it can be extended further and uh, this is what saurabh told me that look we had made that mistake in 2014 we don't want to make that mistake now so uh but then it's still yes. a very fluid situation so i would not want to say with definitive this thing that this is going to happen and you know i i wouldn't want to give a ball by ball account of uh you know what is going to happen at 5 o'clock uh, what will happen at 4:30 uh, tomorrow when kejriwal we'll see uh, how it unravels but these are broadly the two issues which i think uh one, are playing one, right one quick question and then i'll come to mr tyagi that uh, now this move surely appears to be putting bjp on the back foot majorly don't you see it that way it it does bjp will let uh, will seem to be at a crossroad or you think that i, I would say that yes i mean uh, you see it all depends on your political uh, reflexes as an organization yes in the immediate aftermath of his announcement yesterday the party would have been taken by surprise in fact many in, even within the aam aadmi party were taken by surprise i know several of the mlas uh, okay. and quite a few of them personally and uh, they had no idea the only ones who had you know some inkling uh, were told specifically that this is not to be discussed so uh, I, i i wouldn't want to go into those names but the bjp for the congress and in several people within the aap including mlas including even a few ministers had no inkling of this so it has come as a surprise to them it may have unsettled them 
uh, for the time being, uh, you know. But then, how how do you describe that they are on the back foot? You know, if if the if it was going as per what uh, the, you know the trajectory that Mr. Kejriwal has said, get the elections done in November, then one would have said, uh, and if the election commission indeed allowed the election to happen in November. Then one would say that yes, it puts the BJP on the back foot because uh, if the AAP was doing it, it would have one would assume that it would have put its strategy in place before making this kind of an announcement, and it would have caught others by surprise and forced them to rethink their electoral strategy. But that, at the moment at least, is not the situation. We do not know whether early elections are happening. We do not know whether they will happen in November. Uh, or they will happen as scheduled in the first week of February. So the BJP, it all depends on their political reflexes. How do they react to this situation? Uh, what is their counter strike? Because you know it's politics at the end of the day. Don't think that because Mr. Kejriwal has moved a certain uh, you know pawn on the chessboard, uh, the his opponents are no, are going to just sit still and not uh, have a counter strike in mind. They will also have that. It may, uh, it may fall flat. It may work. We don't know. But uh, I think it was a very momentary setback, and the parties will have some kind of a counter strategy in mind as uh, things unravel. Right now, Mr. Tyagi, I was listening to what Puneet was saying that you know many people were taken by surprise when uh, K. Jival made this announcement of stepping down, and I'm sure there will be several others who mustn't have liked this move as well. Now, there would be some kind of a churning when the new name of the chief minister comes up. Now, since yesterday, I've been looking at the social media. Sunita Kejriwal's name has also been doing the rounds. Do you think that uh, Kejriwal really is going to make that mistake <coughs> of uh, putting Sunita on the CM chair? See, this is a very uh, ticklish question. Uh, nobody knows Kejriwal. Nobody knows what is his in mind. And he never discloses the things uh, to anybody. That is the uh, uh, enigmatic situation in the up, and people are scared from him. You know, um, uh, the, the, the MLAs goes to him and talk to him. You can't imagine the plight the MLAs uh, discuss when they meet and come out. Uh, it's a very different. You see, the inner palace of the Kejriwal is very dirty and filthy, and uh, nobody knows. And these four people, which I named earlier, decide the fate of the politics of the AAP. Uh, little bit the uh, AAP, you can say uh, this Manish Sodia is being consulted sometime as a, a, a need basis. Otherwise, the external forces who are guiding the Kejriwal uh, decides the action of the Kejriwal. As far as in the political circle, the which is being rumored, there is no authenticity of those rumors that you uh, work hard in Haryana, we will hand over the Delhi to you. That depends on basically uh, Amit Shah now, because Amit Shah is in command and Amit Shah is looking after Delhi after the demise of the Arun Jaitley, because Arun Jaitley also smashed this whole thing. Arun Jaitley was uh, brought care the uh, Kiran Bedi into Delhi politics, which was failed. But unfortunately, uh, Arun Gatli died. Now the new protege of the Amit Shah is Samriti Irani. Samriti Irani is working hard for last uh, 10, day, uh, 10 days. She is moving. She yesterday also had the uh, Mohalla meetings there. And the things are moving. Now come back to uh, what he will do. There are two aspects. If he chooses his wife, that is one and the same thing that will not give a right message as per my uh, thought process. Uh, Puneet may be agree or disagree. If she chooses, he chooses the Atishi. Atishi, the, actually the problem with the Kedri Val is there is a trust deficit among the colleagues. So what Atishi will do, nobody knows. Atishi is a woman to be watched very carefully. She is uh, uh, calculating um, in the absence of Manish Sisodhya, Sanjay Singh, and uh, Kedriwan. And 
that apprehension has been realized by Kejriwal's wife. That is why Kejriwal's wife was stepped into the all opposition unities. And if you recall, Raghav Chadda was also absent from the whole. He was in London settling with the, our uh, great friends, boys, those who are working there in Canada and London. So this is a Kejriwal knows he is trapped. But he has good advocates, good friends and foes. They are in the system, not naming other one, because uh, uh, he is in a very deep uh, uh, system there in this. As there is no, don't think there is a break between the, uh, of the lines between Kejriwal and the BJP. No. Third aspect in which we are just missing in this whole debate is the Congress party. Congress party number one does not have the leader. Congress party has got the leader Ajay Makan. Ajay Makan is rescuing himself from entering into the Lee politics. He thinks he has become too big. He is the national treasurer and the Raj Sabha MP from Karnataka and he is the blue eyed boy of Rahul Gandhi. Whether Rahul Gandhi will be able to sacrifice Ajay Makan in this election for the Lee leadership or not, that has to be seen. The, that, that is more important. Number two, that has to be seen whether the Congress or AAP goes for alliance. That alliance in Haryana was restrained by the forces to utilize Kejriwal services in Haryana to support his Congress. Now, Congress has to take a call whether the Congress wants to finish itself forever in Delhi or whether right. it wants to remain relatively relevant there in the Delhi political scenario to have an alliance with AAP and then move on the politics. So, see, Kedriwal is a wonderful phenomenon in Delhi. Uh, mm. the, 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 there is a Bhagavati Charan Verma uh, novel there in Hindi, Sabai Nachavat Ram Gusain. So, Sabai Nachavat Kedriwal. So, Kedriwal ka ye hal hai. So, Kedriwal is a fantastic thing. Kedriwal has done this town is a third rate slum. This is a ready Patriwala town. But see the influx in Delhi, which is coming on. It's a that, three that, and that a is, half crore town. Yeah. So the sure. civil system has collapsed. You can right. you believe I'm, it. Right. And I'm sure we'll be doing many episodes on Delhi where you pointed out and a significant point about Congress that you know. You talk to me, Delhi, I will tell you the ministry wise, chapter wise, Morla wise, what is sure, happening. Sure, sure, sure. But today's discussion was all about uh, Arvind Kejriwal and what is announcement will do to Aam Aadmi Party and how it's going to impact BJP. So, of course, all these points have been uh, highlighted. Manish Sasodia and Arvind Kejriwal are meeting to decide who the next CM candidate will be. Of course, there's a lot of mystery on the name as to who will become the next chief minister. Whom is he going to pick and choose as his successor chief minister? That's a million dollar question right now. But yes, there's seemingly uh, uh, is, is some kind of a churn is visible within the Aam Aadmi Party. As uh, Puneet very rightly pointed out that there are many leaders who were taken by surprise when he made this announcement. There would be others who would not have liked this announcement. So how are they going to react? A lot of it will also depend on how Aam Aadmi Party pans out itself in the coming months. Thank you so much, uh, Satyani. And, uh, for joining and one appeal to the viewers who are watching this discussion, subscribe to our channel. Send us a feedback and stay tuned to the Federal.